Dr. Sam Osparag is from the central Turkey region, Asia Minor, Cappadocia, to be more precise. Over the last several thousands of years, this area was intersection of many civilizations coming from east and west. We know about the Persian Empire, Babylon, Assyrians, Akkad, coming from the east, even Egyptians at one point. And from the west, of course, mighty Hittite Empire. And after their collapse in the 7th century BC, we have ancient Greek and ancient Roman empires. So, people have been uh, going through this region for the longest time. Caravansarais during the peaceful times, or mighty armies during the times when the new conquerors would arise and try to conquer the new territories. So, right now I am at the UNESCO protected site called Berinkuyu. Very close, just 10 kilometers from here, is another one, also of impressive size. It's called Kaimakli. Those two centers are the biggest underground tunnel complexes in this region. There are 36 of them that are open for public and probably several hundreds of them that have been still under the ground, either not uncovered, not discovered, or kept in secret by the local people who have actually entrance to the underground complexes from their bedrooms. Now, who would go through such a huge construction feat to build those cities? Sometimes they are reaching 13 stories below the ground. Well, if you think about many nations coming include that people would use something like this for a shelter to hide. And uh, some of the people are, you know, from the archaeological uh, aspects, they are telling us that there are probably up to 3,500 people who could hide in here. However, when you get in there, you soon realize that some of the resources were present and some of them were not. So obviously, this has never been used as a place for the permanent stay. Even temporarily, we can talk maybe days, up to a few weeks, and that will be it. So again, such a huge complex just for a few days doesn't make too much sense. When you come to those sites, what is accepted by the guides and by the archaeology and the history, anthropology, that uh, there are certain areas which they named as the church or style or winery or kitchen or places to have meetings, bedrooms, daily activities, and so on. However, when you look closely, it's very hard to find an evidence for something like that. When you look for the place where thousands of people would stay, just one aspect, there was no solar system. How would they survive for so many days in such smell? On the other hand, the way they did it, it looks like to me totally different than official explanation. Official explanation goes like this. People are digging first the first floor below the ground, and the second, and the third, and the fourth, so they are adding rooms, they are adding passageways, and so on. However, when you see the main, um, the main reason when it comes to the resources, which is the air, the airflow, you can very soon realize that in the case of the Kaimakli, there was an air shaft, about 18 meters deep, that is obviously a result of the master plan. So, when you're planning to stay under the ground, you think about the air, you think about the water, and you think about the food. When it comes to the air, it was a genius. They went vertically down at 90 degrees, 85 meters, about one and a half to two meters wide. And then, once you have such a deep shaft, which is connected to different levels, you are getting the airflow, hot, cold, deeper you go, it's colder. And then, the way they were building the rooms or cavities, you never have passageways that go straight and connect them. There is always curvature 
Why is that? Again, because of the airflow. When you have labyrinth type complex, then the air is flowing. When you have one straight tunnel, the air does not flow. That was, you know, genius. So we got the labyrinth types, we have different heights of the healings, and you have one main shaft. Why different heights of ceilings is important? Again, for the airflow. We have imagined 8, 10, 13, or even more stories. It's very important that you have presence of oxygen everywhere. And you cannot get it if you have the same height of the ceiling. If you have different heights and the areas where the ceiling is rather low, there is a little bit pressure trying to push the air below the ceilings. When you have higher ceilings, of course the pressure is much weaker. And then if you go up and down, up and down, the pressure changes. With the change of the pressure, then we are getting the airflow. So once you have a labyrinth type of the underground complex, you have constant movement of the air. And with this huge vertical shaft, you can supply of the cold air. Meaning, once you have nice low temperature, then you can store the food. Because this area, during the summertime, the temperatures are really high, reaching 35, 40, 45. Nowadays, even more degrees. So it was important for them to have a low temperature to keep the food fresh. The next thing, during the winter time, again, very, very cold winters, being under the ground, we always have such pleasant temperature. So when it comes to the resources, Airflow, we just explained, and then the water. Now, if you are thinking in terms of the living under the siege, it's very important to have the water. Otherwise, the enemy comes, they poison your water, or they cut the supplies of the water, you need to surrender. So what they had here, they have their underground water wells. And the nice thing about it, especially here in Derinkoyu, that supply was not connected to what was on the ground, on the surface. So if they had their underground water, it meant that they could sustain longer under the ground. So, water and food. So it is all explainable. But then, again, I wouldn't think that thousands and thousands of people are living here. And the matter of fact, people who with, uh, you know, developed extrasensory uh, abilities, they can talk about different energies here. Some they can say positive, some they can say negative. My personal feeling, uh, last time I was coming here, and this time, I feel that the cold energy. You know, we humans, you know, uh, warm-blooded uh, species, we always think in the uh, reference of having some nice place, positive place, but in this particular case, I cannot feel that. So probably it has something to do with those, with the original builders. I'm not talking about the periods that came later, periods like 2000 years back or 1600 years back. So either the, during the times when the Christians were persecuted or the time when the Christianity was accepted as a state religion in the Eastern Roman Empire. I'm talking about the time much before that. So, who were the original builders? Well, when we see the civilizations living here, we do not have, not a single document stating that so-and-so kingdom built these underground tunnel complexes. Now, uh, on some of the documents, especially those that were submitted to UNESCO, they even mentioned Hittites. Now, Hittites, they go back for about 4,000 years. Again, for them, we would like to see many more underground complexes during their kingdom, not only in Cappadocia. Now, if not Hittites, then who? Then? Well, Hittites, officially 4,000, even though we can trace some of the societies here, five, six, and even 7,000 years. For example, you go to Kanesh, Kanesh, four cultural layers, two first layers, the deepest layers, they are from the prehistorical times. But, you know, archaeologists today, they are just developing, you know, the story about the third layer, which is about 4,000 years back. 
So, if you go at least 7,000 years, the question is, who has such an engineering skills to build something like this? Personally, I think this complex is even much older. Does it go uh, way back, even before the end of the last ice age, 11,500 or 12,000 years back? It is very possible. Now, with the Gobekli Tepe stories and some others, even Hattusha, those big megaliths, much before the Hittite Empire, we can really say that this area witnessed developed civilizations long way in the past. Is it more than 12,000? It is possible. And who built it? Frankly, we don't know. I don't know. I did some rudimentary energy measurements, nothing special. So I don't see the human hands involved in this original building. And later on, the stories go that people are coming, they were hiding from Romans. That's all fine. For me, this is just a folklore. What we need to do, we need to get back down to the ground and try to find the real builders and real purpose. And at this point, even myself, I'm at the odd. I do not have those answers.